It's not every day that a player's contract is terminated by their respective teams. Sure, mutual terminations tend to be more common, but when it's one-sided, it tends to raise more eyebrows throughout the hockey community. In this video, we're going to go over four different instances in which contracts were terminated. We'll touch on each player's unique situation, why the termination happened, and the aftermath as well. And with that, here are four NHL players who had their contracts terminated for controversial reasons. Most of us can still remember the pair of Stanley Cups that Jonathan Quick and his team managed to capture last decade. In 2012, the Kings seemingly came out of nowhere and dominated despite being the 8th seed in the West. And just two years later, LA came out on top yet again after defeating the New York Rangers in five games. Among the names that were drawn on Lord Stanley's Cup in both occasions was that of the former 23rd overall pick of 2003, Mike Richards. Richards, who was traded to the Kings in the summer of 2011, was mainly moved elsewhere due to his lifestyle, meaning that the forward had a tendency to embrace the party scene just a little too much for the Flyers' liking. And really though, in all actuality, the trade really did give Richards a lot of opportunity and reward in a short time frame. Unfortunately though, Richards' future with Los Angeles quickly came under threat as well in the summer of 2015. In June, while attempting to cross the border into Manitoba, Richards was found to be in possession of an illegal and controlled substance. Due to this fact, he was made to serve time briefly prior to being released. However, Canadian authorities weren't the only ones dishing out punishment in this case. After the Kings got wind of the incident, Richards' 12-year, $69 million deal was terminated. Despite this though, due to the grievance filed from Richards himself, he later agreed to a settlement. And it wasn't long after that that the Washington Capitals signed the two-time Stanley Cup champ to a one-year deal. Even though Richards has yet to formally announce his retirement, I think all of us can agree that he won't be returning to the NHL, at least as a player anyways. Out of all the players on this list, Alex Galchenyuk was definitely the one to take the steepest decline. Once looked at as the next Marian Hossa, Galchenyuk, who was drafted third overall in 2012, entered the league with a lot of hype surrounding him. Things seemed to start off decently well for the forward, hockey-wise, as he quickly became a fan favorite in Montreal. He made multiple appearances in McDonald's commercials and developed quite the bromance with longtime Hab Brendan Gallagher. Despite his likability, however, he was traded to Arizona during the offseason of 2018. Prior to the trade going down, there was an inkling in 2017 that Galchenyuk had already developed some substance abuse issues. According to some statements made from former Montreal coach Mario Tremblay, it was revealed that Galchenyuk had received treatment for his dependency for alcohol and drugs. And looking back, it really does help piece together as to why he was traded so frequently and signed with numerous teams. Throughout the decade that he was present in NHL happenings, he ended up representing seven different clubs. Anyways, it was during his second stint with Arizona that things for Galchenyuk quickly began to unravel. Just 13 days after signing a one-year deal with the Yotes, Galchenyuk made headlines for all of the wrong reasons. On July of this year, Galchenyuk was apprehended by local authorities in Scottsdale after a hit-and-run incident. However, that was only the beginning of the story. While in custody, he then proceeded to say some derogatory choice words and to threaten an officer. Because of YouTube policies, we're not going to go into the extent of it, but if you're new to the story, I'll have a link below that goes into more detail. After the verbal tirade, he was then booked on misdemeanor charges. And just days after the fact, Arizona Coyotes terminated Galchenyuk's contract due to what they deemed to be an off-ice situation. It wasn't long after that that the inevitable transpired, as word later broke that Galchenyuk had taken his talents overseas and had signed to play in the KHL. Coming into the NHL draft of 2009, Kane already had a bit of a reputation of being headstrong and at times difficult to coach, and it quickly became apparent that Kane was a type of personality that just rubbed others the wrong way. As pretty much everywhere he went, he was finding himself in the middle of a feud with a teammate on a constant basis. After failing to endear himself to the city of Winnipeg, and clashing with teammates in Buffalo, Kane was traded to San Jose. 
For many, the hope was that Kane would be able to put his head down and just play in a smaller hockey market. But unfortunately, it quickly became clear that the controversy had followed him to the Bay Area. After filing for bankruptcy, having divorce proceedings, and being investigated for illegal gambling, Kane managed to produce even more juicy headlines for reporters. Back in October of 2021, Kane was accused and suspended by the NHL for 21 games for violating virus protocol. According to ESPN, the forward was caught using a fake vaccination card after a thorough investigation. Once the suspension came to an end, the Sharks sent Kane down to their AHL affiliate after putting him on waivers. While on thin ice already due to his previous actions in December of the same year, Kane decided to travel to Vancouver while ignoring virus protocols yet again. Due to this fact, the Sharks decided to terminate his seven-year, $49 million contract in January thereafter. However, just like Richards, Kane wasn't going to simply walk away and filed a grievance. Throughout the grievance proceedings, Kane ended up signing a short-term deal with Edmonton due to the unique situation in January of 2022. He then extended months later in July of the same year. This time, Kane was given a four-year, $20 million contract by GM Ken Holland. And it wasn't long after, in September shortly before training camp was set to commence, that a settlement was finally reached by Kane, the NHLPA, and the San Jose Sharks. And now, finally, we've made it to the most recent incident on this list, and the one that's still fresh in the minds of NHL fans. By the time Perry arrived in the Windy City, he was viewed as a decorated veteran. With a Stanley Cup and Hart and Rocket Richard trophies to his name, Perry was signed to a one-year deal valued at $4 million. The assumption was that, similarly to Nick Foligno, Perry was brought in by GM Cal Davidson to help Connor Bedard off of the ice more than anything. It's not so much for me on the ice, it's away from the rink, it's in the dressing room, just being a good teammate. Perry told reporters in July. And really, by all accounts, the arrangement started off quite well. Unfortunately though, the father-son connotation would soon take a whole new meaning. The swirling speculation came about in result of Perry being suddenly removed from the Blackhawks lineup. With no news of any sort of injury, family emergency, etc., hockey media and fans in general began to craft their own theories regarding the absence. And it was less than a week after Perry mysteriously disappeared that his contract was suddenly terminated. As I alluded to, due to the lack of information that fans initially received, some theories began to surface. And the one that got the most attention was the rumor that involved Bedard's mother, Melanie. The theory was that Perry had an affair with her during the mom's trip that took place a little more than a week prior to the vanishing. Anyways, it was later revealed that an affair was far from the truth for the reason as to why Perry had been punished. The Blackhawks later released a statement that says, quote, he engaged in conduct that is unacceptable and is in violation of both terms and his standard player's contract and the Blackhawks' internal policies intended to promote professional and safe work environments, end quote. Insider Pierre Lebrun stated that the incident happened in Nashville where the team was on the road and involved alcohol, something that was corroborated by Perry himself. As he said in a lengthy statement, he released that he's seeking help due to struggles with alcohol. Even though Perry still has time to file a grievance, many are speculating that he's going to refrain. Despite the unfortunate turn of events, hopefully, after getting the help he needs, Perry can make a comeback in the NHL sooner rather than later. In conclusion, again, this is something that you don't see every day, but if you're curious about other rare incidents of this nature, be sure to check out my video I did on various NHL players who were canceled to the KHL. If you enjoyed this video and are new to my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. And if you're already subbed and consuming my content on the regular, please consider joining my Patreon. Plans start at only a dollar a month and come with various perks, including video previews, monthly shoutouts, and unseen analytics. If you'd like to support me, simply click on the link for Patreon below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.